welcome to our home finally today is the day that we show you our home on wheels our berry yes our berry so let's have a look inside right. so here we have the kitchen area she's very small but very cute and it's functional um and then kitchen sink electrical pump the electrical pump and that's why we have covered and that's why we have covered this with the plastic around because we don't want the the switch to get wet because otherwise if it's electrical and water and electrics I don't, don't mix don't go together so for that this is a temporary solution until we figure out how we can cover that a little bit better storage place and here is the light mm -hmm. uh, and also a charger but we're gonna go on about this a little bit later yeah it's with a second battery but i'll show you in a minute yeah so light 12 volts charger. here Woo! this is what happens when we drive and we don't store things properly so this is food and this is our bin our fridge that is currently empty our cooler box very small anyway it's just so we can store stuff that we buy on the day and we can put some ice and it doesn't go bad and we also have drinking water up uh, down there that i'm not going to take out and put this back together we had to buy everything for the kitchen, all kitchen utensils, because the van did not come with any of this. The van just came completely empty. We had the mattress and that was it. Yep. So we had to buy essentially everything that you are seeing. Where did we buy all this? Was Kmart and was the... Kmart and the warehouse. Mm. Uh, ideally we would, have, we would have bought everything um in kmart because it was cheaper uh but we where we were near auckland it was um i think papa toy toy or something around that <laughs> i love area. that name yeah. papa toy toy um so it was around that area and we saw online uh some of the stuff that we wanted to buy and they were sold out so there was nothing on kmart in in regards to you know kitchenware or whatever uh, so it was in between Kmart and the warehouse and um, yeah, that was the cheapest ones anyway and it's where you can find everything that you need. Ah, one thing that the van came with was our cooker. We have a cooker that it's stored here. So this little thing, it's connected to the gas bottle the gas bottle is locked we just screw that in yeah nice and tight nice and tight and then we open that we open this get a lighter open the gas and then there you go so you now know how we cook yeah and a, a bottle like this um it lasts us for i would say two weeks two, three three weeks depending on how much we cook and how long we use the gas for this is just full cooking only the funny thing is here in new zealand they refill the bottle so you take the bottle to a petrol station or a gas station if you're american and they will just fill it with uh with gas so yeah. it was pretty unusual for us to yeah. To go into a petrol station and refill a bottle. Yeah. Because <laughs> normally we just swap them. Now, moving on to the bedroom area. It's pretty big. It fits the both of us and we still have a lot of space. Um, I can demonstrate that it's very spacious. Very, very spacious. Now, let's move on to a different topic about the van. I'm going to show you the second battery. So, we got the main battery which is for for the engine and then we've got a second battery which powers up the the lights here at the back and that little switch socket for 12 volts and also the water pump so you can see here so it's behind this this is fresh water and this is gray water gray water is from the sink this one is what we use to to cook 
the fresh water and the grey water um, there are very specific places where we can refill and dump which is called dump stations uh, so we dump this into a proper place and we refill it sometimes there is drink drinking water there sometimes there isn't uh, so we just use it mostly to do the dishes and we have our one to drink like I showed you before and then behind here is the second battery powering all of that that I was just mentioning so yeah. this is it and on top of that battery we decided that the power was not going to be enough to power up our wi-fi thingy and our laptops and our phones and everything because we work online as you guys know so we bought our own solar panel <laughs> it was a bit of a panic buy yeah. it's a solar panel it's on the roof it but you can just take it out it's mobile so yeah we bought a solar panel and a portable power station it's not uh, a very strong one we had one in portugal that was 10 times better than this one yeah, 10 times stronger but this one does the job for for now we go in the mornings to a library we charge it and then we use it in the evenings and then the next day it's on repeat now, in regards to the Wi-Fi situation, we went with Wireless Nation as we needed portable Wi-Fi as we are working. Um, you have Wi-Fi anywhere as long as you have a phone signal. It's been working great so far with us. We went for the unlimited plan. It costed us, it's costing us 110 New Zealand dollars per month. And we had to buy the modem. And this little thing here costed us 300 and something dollars. But we needed it and it's been working really good so far. We're happy with it. And the only thing I don't really like about the van is these patterns. And the curtains as well. And the curtains, yeah, the curtains okay. are ugly. Horrible. And voila, we have a table. There is one thing that we haven't showed you, that it's on this side. And it's also another question that people probably ask a lot, even though in New Zealand, there is plenty of toilets, public toilets, very clean and very nice to use. There's plenty of them in New Zealand everywhere, literally. Uh, but in order to be self-contained fan, we needed to have one and we have to say that we have used it a couple of times for number one only the toilet is right over here Ta -da. Ta -da. this is how it looks like and people are probably wondering if it smells no it doesn't smell we don't use it very often like we said only in emergencies and we have some chemicals that we put in we fill it up with water and flushes yeah flushes here, here. So it doesn't smell of anything, not of chemicals, not of pee, not of nothing. It's really clean and really nice. Not ideal, but it does the job when it's needed. And what about showers? In terms of the showers, we normally look for campsites that have showers on site, like this one over here. I'm gonna show you what they look like inside. Beautiful spot, right? There's very down there hot showers oh yeah all right so these are the toilets and these are the showers let's have a look just go inside you press this button and there you go the water is just the right temperature not too hot not too cold just right these showers are really rare Normally we just go to a city and look for public showers, paid ones. Normally it costs around uh, two to four dollars to take a five minute shower, which is pretty good. And that's how we shower. Yeah, but we also have bought the 20 liters camp shower, which we can use, I would say, more a little bit towards the summer. And about laundry, we just go to a laundromat and do our laundry there. 
it's around $10 per load, like to wash and to dry, which is reasonable as well. As we have a self-contained van, we stay, I would say, 95% of the times at Freedom Camps. Normally, it's scenic views by the lake. Other times, it's just a car park in the city center. We sometimes, or most of the times, there is uh, drinking water at the campsite, and there is also beans where we can just throw our rubbish. Uh, sometimes there isn't much, there's just a toilet. Sometimes there are long drop toilets, which are just a hole, and <laughs> you just have to do your business there. Sometimes it's flush toilets. Uh, sometimes it's one of those uh, toilets that people use, usually use on construction sites. Ah, so there is the portable a bit of, ones. The portable ones, yeah. So there is a bit of everything, and we just have to go as as we are presented with the things. In terms of toilets, New Zealand is amazing. They are everywhere, everywhere literally. clean. And how do we find Freedom Camps? Well, we use Campermate, excellent app to search for campsites free paid toilets even to refill a bottle of gas all information Dump is stations. all the information is there there is also rankers new zealand uh which are also they also have some um campings there that are not available in uh campermate and the other way around so we switch in between the two but mostly it's campermate because we can see reviews as well and that's very important because we don't want to stay in places that are a little bit dodgy. And most of the places uh, you are allowed to stay two to three nights. That's something important to to know. Is you, you always have to to know the uh, regulations of, of the place. Yeah. And that in that app, it tells you. Yeah. So you're always following the law. Otherwise, you may ne get to knock at seven o'clock in the morning and get in a two hundred dollar fine, and you don't want that, do you? No. <laughs> And it's also, I mean, you can stay if you are very comfortable knowing all the district's different laws and bylaws and everything, which we don't know and I don't think we're going to be into that. We're just going to be finding our places in Campermate. But if you are into that and if you want to research, you can go into the DOCS website specifically, specifically for each district of the country and you can find more information of where you can freedom camp, even if it's not like a campsite or anything. Sometimes you can just stay in random places, but you really have to know the laws and bylaws of each district. So for that reason, we just recommend Campermate. Hustle free. Easy. Uh, but I think, yeah, that's pretty much everything that we have for the van. Now, the regulations of uh, buying the van or the process that we went through of buying the van and looking for a van and all that stressful thing, it, it was just... So, from the beginning, we arrived in Auckland. In September, where everybody arrived at the same time, so it was a chaotic time. Everybody was buying vans like they were hot cookies, so they were going pretty yeah. fast. And I remember like two weeks before we came here, um, I started looking for vans just to have a little bit of a comparison of prices and state of the van and types of vans and everything. So I was looking, there was so many offers, so cheap. But then when we arrived, it was just a nightmare. And we met so many people that were staying in the same uh, hostel as we were and they were desperate as well and some people were lucky and just staying for one two nights buying the van and leaving uh, we ended up staying two weeks because you needed to get the uh, bank account and more stuff figured national out. insurance number the R I I R D. I uh, so we ended up staying a bit longer and we had more time to look for a van and we visited I don't know but we visited quite a few places quite a few people and we ended up buying this one yeah we went to a a dealership it was not ideal but we paid a little bit more well a lot but a lot more than uh, the prices that we were looking at before but i think at the time it was that price or nothing yep. and now i think it's worth it because it is we don't spend money on accommodation yeah, so and we, it is nice i mean everything was made and we are the first ones to use everything that's here we had to buy a uh, lot of the kitchenware and we had to buy the bedroom stuff and everything but we bought it in our own taste oh, my own taste i mean i it, don't care it makes a big difference for me we have the place the way we want it 
and would you like to know how much we paid just for the van itself that was a lot of money it was 17 grand just for the van itself yeah. and then we paid another i would say 800 900 on utensils for for the van the duvet and pa pans and pots and the everything duvet, i think everything. the duvet was the most expensive thing or one of the most expensive things and then we ended up buying also the chairs and the table yeah which a lot of stuff which is not like super expensive but one little bit one little bit one little bit it adds up to quite a and lot. then the portable power station and the solar panel that was an extra grand so in total we spent nineteen thousand dollars new zealand dollars yeah but i think <sighs> the van is worth that because it's from 2002 there is no mechanical problems it's yep. super sound uh it passed the wall for the inspection first time with no issues at all the the engine is neat battery. so far so far everything is going good yep. oh yeah you haven't seen the heart of the the van have you haven't shown you the engine and it's a funny place <laughs> have a guess where it is well i can tell it's not here it's not here there's no space for it there's it's not at the back i'm going to show you now are you ready passenger seat and up voila it's over here on the christiana seat there we go and this is the engine and all of that and the battery yeah it's battery here. it's over here under here yeah we're not gonna there's no point i mean but the engine and everything is here and no and it does not heat up the seat i don't feel it this is a petrol van there's something weird here as well in new zealand you pay a tax on diesel yeah. it's be easier to have a petrol vehicle manual as well and we drive on the left side here in new zealand so yeah i think the what it is is that the tax of um the tax of the petrol is already included when we buy the petrol and the tax of the diesel it's not included so people need to pay it by the mile so usually people pay it by like they buy 10,000 kilometers and they after the 10,000 kilometers they have to buy another 10,000 10, kilometers which is super weird for us and we wanted a specific vehicle that was going to be petrol so we wouldn't have to worry about that another no. thing is the Rego or reg anyway is the the tax the vehicles tax we paid 12 months i can't remember i think it was like 150 160 new zealand dollars roughly that and this is the the tax it's and another thing here in new zealand is insurance insurance well you don't have to have insurance it's, it's not mandatory it's not mandatory but we would say that you should it's recommended yes you <laughs> should especially third party because if you hit someone then you you're in big trouble you're financially big trouble. honestly we don't have one for now but we're going to we're going to make third party insurance yeah and you should too if you buy a vehicle at least third party you should yeah because everything happened so fast with us we found the van and then we bought it and we only have like the weekends really to sort things out um so yeah that was the thing that we haven't sorted out yet was the insurance but we will it's third party i think it's going to be enough also another thing worth mentioning is the driving license uh so if you have an english driver's license you can drive in new zealand and you don't have to uh, exchange your driving driver's license to a New Zealand one. Uh, in our case, we have a Portuguese driver's license, so it's not in English. People don't understand it. So we had two options. We were either going to exchange ours or change our uh, current driving license to a New Zealand one. And then after our trip, we would go back to Portugal and we would have to do the process again. Uh, and then the other option would be to have an international driving permit, uh, which we could get it or you could get it in your own country. We didn't do this because we decided to do the translation version of our driver's license. We arrived in Auckland, found a translation place, translated our driver's license, and that's what we have to be able to drive in New Zealand. It costed us, I think, 60, 60 New Zealand dollars, which would be... Oh, Per person yeah but which would be around the same price as it would be the um international driving permit in our own country so 
yeah, not too much to worry about that. It takes, uh, it took her uh, like three or four days to get that translated. And we now have a paper saying that we are. We can drive that we can legally, drive legally, can drive legally. In, in New Zealand. I mean, it's just a paper translating the categories of vehicles that we drive, that we can drive. Which, I mean, if you have a car, a driver's license, you can drive a, a van, a small van. We don't need a special uh, permit category on your driver's license. That's it for the driver's license part. And I think that's it for today's video. Yay! <laughs> so... All right, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We shall see you in the next one. See ya! See ya.